All right guys, welcome back to part four of our surfboard build series. Now, in the last part, we finished refining the outline of our board. And in this video, we are going to attach the tail block, which is a solid block of wood, as well as finish the shaping and basically get this thing ready for fiberglassing so it's ready for the water. So really excited. Uh, let's get back into it. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the tail. And as you can see, we have a fairly ugly lamination of the rail and that is okay because what we intended to do here anyway was to cut off a section of the tail and glue on a solid block. That does a few things for us. It gives us a solid area that we can mount our fin plug in and it also gives us a kind of cool area that we could play with and do some creative design. So if you wanted to, you could cut this off on a, on a weird shape, like a wave for example, and put a block in there that matches that profile. Because this is going to be a simple board though, what we are going to do is just try and do it as a fairly straight cut. All right, so that is our cut line and it feels really bad to do this, but what I'm gonna come in with is my jigsaw and cut this off. Now the top deck, which is what we're looking at here, has a bit of a concave and a, a weird angle to it. So we're gonna flip the board over and cut it from the other side. Now the block of wood that you can put on the end here is going to be supplied by you and it is your chance to kind of make a statement when it comes to your tail. I have this really stunning piece of Banksia which is probably a little bit overkill for this but because this has a really nice grain pattern in it and it's a relatively light wood this will be a pretty nice tail for this board. So with that same profile traced onto this piece of wood but oversized. I'm going to cut that out. Now I'm going to use my bandsaw but you could just as easily use a jigsaw and then on the face that is going to be butting up to our board here I am going to just give it a little bit of edge treatment making sure it's nice and flat. So Clamping this block into position is going to be a bit of a challenge but it's actually not as hard as it first appears because we have ratchet straps and heavy duty rubber bands. So if we chuck two rubber bands onto this block like so, we now have a viable clamping solution. So by actually being a little bit clever with how we clamp this, we have enough adjustment in the rubber bands. And once we have some glue on there, this will be enough to hold it in place. So that's our dry run out of the way. Let's apply some glue, some water, and get this to set. Okay. And that is one attached block. All right, so today is now tomorrow. So that means that our tail block has been uh, drying all night. And I also went ahead and I just trimmed it down to be flush with the deck again. So the method we use to do that is the exact same as the rails. So we just use a block plane referencing the heel of the plane on the board while the blade is removing all of the excess material. And I did that for both the top and the bottom. Now we still have the issue of this not matching the profile of the board. So as you can see, we've got the template laid out over the board here, and this is gonna give us some cut marks or some, uh, some guidelines anyway. Now, you can see I've actually transferred the inner line onto the tail here. Now, to do that, I just used some chalk and rubbed it on this template, laid it over, and then carefully just traced it with a pencil. Now, you could also do this with the outer line, but I actually, uh, for whatever reason, I cut this block just slightly too small here, so I'm actually going to have to transition it to be slightly smaller, which is not really a big issue. It's only maybe one or two mil. So with this line, which you can barely see on camera, but it is there, we're going to just use a pair of dividers and trace this profile to the narrowest spot. So here I'm just setting the gap to the narrowest spot, which is right here. And then with the pin tracing the yellow line, we can just mark our offset. Now we're currently developing these little guides which will come with every board as a uh, downloadable PDF which you can just print out and make your own template with 
or additionally, we will be able to include them in the kits for just a few extra dollars. Uh, we haven't finished all of them yet, so they're not available, but they will be available before the end of this week. The idea with these are from the tail, 100 millimeters up is the profile we're looking for. Up 500 millimeters, that's the profile, etc., etc. The majority of your shaping can be done with a block plane, so this is how you'll get most of your ra radiuses, but a good quality rasp like this won't hurt either just to smooth things out or to get into areas where the block plane can't. We can see that we want a radius all the way along here, so we're just gonna start getting even shavings along the entire length of this board and just starting to ease this radius in. Now, if you're relatively new to uh, hand tool work and shaping like this, this will take you a good while. Just take your time, go slow. Don't take too much material off. Constantly check your progress. And basically, if it takes you four days, it takes you four days. This is the most vital part of getting a board that behaves well on the water, is getting a nice symmetrical shape. On the top deck, so we just basically want to get a nice radius over this entire edge until it makes contact with this bottom rail. So what we're doing is making multiple flats at slightly different angles just to come up with that curved profile. So we take one stroke with the plane at like 15 degrees. Then we take the next stroke with the plane tilted slightly steeper to maybe 18 degrees and then 20 degrees and then further and further until we've worked our way down to that rail. Now, when you get close, you will start to actually roll the plane along the rail, and that will just give you a smooth transition. But the very last part is hand sanding with a file and sandpaper until it's transitioned perfectly. Alright, so once you start getting that round over just established, now's the time to start looking at your actual template. So from 100mm onto the tail, let's have a look where we're going. Well, we can see we've still got a fair bit of work. At 500mm, which is around here, we're getting pretty close actually, so we're, uh, we've probably gone a little bit shallower than we have to, but with a little bit more on the top, we're going to be good. Up at 900mm, same story, so we're starting to really get in there and we're starting to get hung up on the bottom. Once again, very similar story. So we're just going to periodically check. So here, really, really what's holding us up is the bottom there. So that's not too bad. Yeah. So we'll just keep doing this. All right, so that is the rough shaping done in, but now what we're left with is multiple flat spots around the rail. So this is where a rasp comes in, where you can actually rasp and rotate and just ease all those transitions. Here, I start fairly flat, but I lift it vertical. This is where a pair of these shaping horses come in real handy because you can get on top of the board and really start to look at your transitions. Now, and finishing it off is just some uh, sandpaper cloth back so you can really pull on it. And basically we're just gonna run this along and this will now take care of all of the smoothing and uh, really just get rid of any of those low spots. Okay, and that is the top rail all done. So feeling nice and symmetrical. Once again, just feel it with your hands and just use the feedback to feel if it feels like uh, the curve is out by any. That is perfect. Now, shaping the underside will determine a lot 
of how your board will behave. If you leave it sharp everywhere, so this nice 90 degree crisp, even up to the nose, you might find that that board digs in a lot, it's uncontrollable and uh, really might give you a hard time. Generally what happens is up at the nose and up until about the three quarter mark, you'll actually have a fairly big round over and that helps the board not dig on on the nose but also pop up over the water. And then it starts to transition into a nice 90 degree edge at the tail and halfway point. Rail shape could be an entire lesson in itself, but just have a look around at other boards that you like, that you've ridden maybe and, and have liked the way it behaves and kind of mimic what they're doing there, at least for your first board. So in this case, I'm gonna do a fairly generous round over up until about the three quarter mark. So the nose up to here, then it's gonna transition into a two to three millimeter radius round over. And by the time it's at the halfway point, it's basically gonna be a sharp corner with maybe a one millimeter round over added just so it's not too sharp. Okay, so I'm just going to mark basically where I'm gonna have a round over put onto. And if we go from the tip of the nose to this point at 1760, and that's 1760. So basically all of this is gonna be a fairly large round over. Then we're gonna start transitioning and I'm gonna to go to about here, 12 and 12. Then it's gonna go from a deep round over into just a small round over. So that's up until here. And then it's basically gonna be a sharp edge for the rest of the board. All right, so might make that a bit more aggressive again. Just the same principle as before, I'm just rocking that plane and rotating it as we do the cut and that gives us the round, round over that we're looking for. The tail, I'm just gonna take it off so it's not dead sharp by maybe doing two or three licks on the very edge. We'll do the same on the other side and then it's the same idea. We'll hit it with a rasp to take out any of the uh, uneven roundovers and then the sandpaper. All right, so this video is getting a little bit long, so we're gonna end it here. And in the next video, we're gonna finish this board off, which will be a quick overview of the fiberglassing process, which we're not gonna go into a lot of detail on, but we will cover a little bit, as well as finally installing the fin hardware, the leash plug, the vent plug, and all that stuff, as well as polishing up the board and getting it ready for the water. So yeah, we're getting really close. Hopefully you are enjoying this series so far. So we'll leave it here, but We'll catch you next time.